put it out for folks to see. They learned something about the church. And that happened this week. It happened after a long day of work. It happened when supper had been eaten and resting clothes had been put on and Bibles had been pulled out. It was similar to the gospel that we heard today. Jesus called to about a dozen of his friends, come with me, climb in the boat with me. And they came at the end of a long day and went to their church. They walked in with Christ, their Redeemer, as head and captain of the ship. They sat down to study scripture and to pray. They came with Jesus just as he is, they came to Jesus just as they were. And then the sky got dark and started looking stormy. A handful of people sitting around in prayer and study when a member of our church walked through their door. A member of the ELCA, who has prayed our same liturgies, grew up with our same Sunday school, was confirmed using the same catechism we were taught and that we teach our youth. A brother from our church walked through those doors, sat at that table in the midst of the disciples with Jesus there, and the storm came in. The wind howled, the water poured over, and at some point, I imagine, our sisters and brothers at Emmanuel AMC Church realized that they were in perishable danger. They realized that this storm was laying a claim on their very breath, and in that moment, I imagine they found Jesus not wielding a shield to defend them, but in a position seeming to be asleep, head on a pillow. But they were committed to Christ who called them into the boat. They were committed to welcoming even the stranger in the doorway who would be their destruction. They welcomed him in in the name of Christ, and when the storm arose around them, they went to Jesus and said, wake up. Teacher, you call us here to learn the heart of God. Do you not care that we're perishing? And it would have been so easy if that young man from the ELCA were nothing more but a gust of wind or a wave crashing overboard. But he wasn't the wind, and he wasn't the wave. And when Jesus stood up, Jesus who got in the ship in our gospel after he had demons obey him, after he had fever and illness obey him, Jesus who in the gospel amazes them because even the winds and the seas obey him, Jesus stands last Wednesday night in a Bible study prayer circle at Emmanuel AMC Church with those whom he called to himself and disaster came. And for everything that would obey him, sin would not. Our brother took up arms against the body of Christ. And we are forced deal with the reality that our name, our faith, our hope, is also a part of that sin, that ugly hate, and that attack. Then, of course, in the power of God, we learn something else that complicates what it means to be God's people on earth. Because the attacker who walked into that room was not the only brother that we had at that table. Certainly in Christ, we are all sisters and brothers, 
But sitting around that table in those hours of Bible study were two voices, two pastors, two leaders of the faith who had to guide that room into their own loss of life, into their own experience of the cross. Pastor Pinckney, Pastor Simmons, whose education you paid for. The pastors of that congregation, four of whom were in the room, two of them were graduates of the Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary in Columbia, South Carolina. Pastor Pinckney, who is 41 years old, whose children have no father to hug this morning, he graduated in 2009, and you supported his education. You supported his growing in faith, so that from that time until last Wednesday night, when he preached the gospel, even in the face of his own attacker, there was a Lutheran proclamation of the gospel in front of a Lutheran sin that attacked. And we become models for the world of what it means to make confession to God and receive true forgiveness. Because that news story isn't just far away. That news story touches us. It touches our prayers. It touches our offerings. It touches our extension into the world around us. And it invites us to ask, what do we do when our sisters and brothers find themselves in a dead calm? In a dead calm on a very stark and stormy night. So let us imagine where we are when we go to wake up Jesus and say, Teacher, do not care that we are perishing. The Jesus, the faith, the presence of God that we are called to awaken in our lives is the one who stands up in our midst and does not deny the terrible brokenness of the world we live in. Jesus stands up and looks racism in its ugly face. He looks at the sexism and the classism and every other divisive problem that we have, every other damnation we throw at each other. Jesus stands up in the midst of the storm crying, Peace, be still, and the weather dies down and we are left to face it. And Jesus turns to us, turns to us in the sin where we attack, and turns to us in the gospel we proclaim, and he says to us, where is your faith? Do you trust that life is going to be livable just because I can make the weather good? Do you trust that I'm a miracle healer who will take away your fever and ease your headache? Do you trust that I'm able to cast out demons in other people? Then meet me as the one who has authority even to quelch the storm of sin that rages in your home and in your community, perhaps even in your own life. Where is your faith, says Jesus? when he stands up to say, of course, God cares when you were perishing. For God so loved this world that Jesus Christ was sent, God sent his only Son, that we who find our faith in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God calls us to stand up in the midst of the dead calm and proclaim the living moment. So that when we go into a world that knows even here in the Lutheran Church there is both sin and gospel at the same time, they will know it's the gospel that wins. Even when it looks like the pastors and the prayers and the studiers and the servants and the Christians and the saints 
even when it looks like the saints have been laid down by the hate and anger of an outside stranger, it is the gospel who will win, who will stand up and give us the all of God's power to go in this world and say, the one who calls us into faith is the one who is faith that we can work until it is true that it is well with your soul in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.